Hi, I'm Ben, a design engineer at Dyson. I'm here to talk you through the equipment you've received in your Engineering Solutions Future of Farming box and how to plant your strawberry plants. Firstly, take your two gutter trays, which looks like this, you'll find at the bottom of your box, and two troughs, which you place in the middle of the tray. Let's take the coir, which is a substance made from coconut husk that allows the roots to bury inside of it, and let's empty it into your trough. Next step is to grab your trowel and dig eight holes along your trough. These holes will be used to plant your strawberry plants in, so make sure they're evenly spaced. Get your plants and place it into the holes and make sure each plant is nice and securely placed in the soil. And we're gonna give them a good water. So slowly fill the water around the plant. Next step is to feed your newly planted strawberries with liquid plant food. Your teacher will need to help you dilute this into another watering can, which will apply over the strawberry plants and coir. Now that you've planted both of your troughs, you can decide which one will be your control crop and which one will be your engineered crop. Your control crop will be grown outside in the natural environment whereas your engineer crop will be grown indoors using supplementary LED lighting and a drip irrigation system. If you're planting in early September, you can take both of these outside until early October. Then your control crop will stay outside through the winter and you'll bring in your engineered crop ready to grow indoors. So here's our engineered crop planted and ready to go. We've brought it inside. We're ready to set up our water dosage system. So all the parts you'll need for this is found in the green box. We have our clear plastic tubing, we have our pump and our dripper system. So we need to cut our clear plastic tubing to two lengths, as you see here, one and two. One length needs to go into your water reservoir, so we can place that in the watering can. And that will be connected to the in valve. And one length of tube will be connected to your drippers which will be connected to the out valve. These drippers need to be spaced evenly throughout the plants. Be careful not to damage the roots or leaves. And we just poke them in just under the level of the soil. Three, four. The tubes and cables need to be long enough so they aren't clashing with the plants and we can put the, the unit by the trough. And when we're ready to set up, we want to set it to water twice a day for one minute. So how we do this, is go to setting HH, the time 60. And the water is being drawn out of your reservoir, which we have a watering can here. It's being pulled through this tube by the pump and then pushed through down into these dripper nozzles. So your plants will get a nice even watering throughout the day. And as the plants grow, they may require more water. In order to work this out, you can press your hands onto the coir and if it's really dry, increase the watering time. If it's too wet and soggy, reduce the watering time. Now your watering system is set up, you can place your pump on the side of your trough by inserting the white clip onto the back bracket and you can slide this over the side of the trough. Make sure you keep your reservoir nice and full of water. As this engineered crop is going to be grown indoors in winter, the light levels can be quite low, so we need to add extra light to ensure the plant is healthy and grows really well. Your LED light strip can be found in the brown box here. In order to turn this on, we need to plug this into a power source. This LED light has a remote control on the cable, and we need to ensure it's turned on and set to an eight hour time interval, which is the red light. We then suspend this over the crop so that the plant gets an even amount of light. So both of your crops are now set up. Your engineer crop has the water dosage system and the LED lighting in place, and your control crop will be outside in natural sunlight and rainwater. Once you've successfully grown some strawberries, we need to test how sweet they are. And we do this by measuring the sugar levels in the fruit. We use a device called a refractometer, which you'll find in a blue box. So this device uses light to measure the amount of sugar in the fruit. First of all, 
we need to make sure it's calibrated so it gives us an accurate reading. We place two to three small drops of water on the window at the front and we place the window down over the top of the glass window and making sure there's no bubbles underneath. We then peer into the device, keeping it horizontal, and we'll see a blue and a white area and a boundary in between the two. The aim is to get the boundary to line up with the zero number on the scale inside. In order to do this, we adjust the level using this thumb term on top and we keep turning until the boundary is at zero. Once you've done this, the device is calibrated and you're ready to test your strawberries. We take our strawberry and our pipette and we squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and get some strawberry juice and we place it underneath on the window and we close up our window and we can see what number the line goes up to. If you're above six, then you've got a fantastically sweet strawberry. If your control crop has grown some successful strawberries, you can use your refractometer to measure the sweetness of those and compare them to your engineer crop. We'd hoped you enjoyed working as a team to grow your strawberry crops and you now understand how you can use technology and engineering principles to enhance the use of traditional farming techniques.